Halloween DVD reviews! I'm your host, the Hillbilly Skeleton, and today we're going to review the Blu-ray of... The Burning! Burning is the infamous slasher flick from 1981. You know, it had Tom Savini effects, of course it made the shit all bloody, it became video nasty over in England. Fucking, you know, it was hard to get a hold of the uncut version for a long time here and shit. Eventually it came out on DVD about five years ago, with a couple extra features, but not much. Thankfully, Shout Factory stepped in. Did this a uh, jam-packed fucking special disc and Blu-ray, so here it is, man. Bernie's notable for a lot of reasons, one being the first movie produced by the Weinstein Brothers, that's right, the guys who made Mario Max and produced all these great films and shit. Well, this is one of their early fucking productions, you know, one of the first times, because at the time they were like concert promoters and shit, and this is kind of like one of their first feature, you know, forays into feature filmmaking and shit, so, you know, they got the money together, and they actually came up with the story. The story, a lot of you may know, is based on Cropsey. The character Cropsey was based on, a, you know, a New York, New Jersey, Long Island legend back in the day, I think in the 70s, started this killing spree. A lot of people thought it was this guy named Crops. He used to be a janitor or some shit at a fucking uh, institute of like criminally insane people, or maybe he was an inmate. The story changes depending on how you talk to. That's who this is based on, but they took the setting from a mental institute of the real life urban legend and put it onto a summer camp. You know, probably to cash in on Friday the 13th. Let's be honest, Weinstein's ain't too fucking creative. The movie starts out. Again, all slasher films have to start with a fucking prank. Well, the prank comes out, a bunch of kids playing a fucking joke on the groundskeeper janitor Cropsey to put a little skull, and it, it, like with maggots and shit. So I don't even know where these kids would have got a fucking maggot the all skull and shit. But they fucking did, and they put it in this motherfucker's uh, little shack that he was living in and shit. So Cropsey wakes up. Fucking knocks that shit over, bed catches on fire, runs out of the cabin, the boys are like, oh shit, we didn't mean for this to fucking happen. So the next thing you know, Cropsey's jumping in the river, burned up, they chronicle his journey, you know, going to a burn ward and shit. A lot of slasher movies don't do that, they just show the motherfucker get burned up and then cut 20 years later. No, they show this motherfucker was in the hospital, he got burned up, he checked out of the hospital, immediately started cook, killing hookers and shit. And that's what I like about this movie, man, like... Yeah, Cropsey is like a boogeyman type, but he doesn't give a fuck. He'll go kill a hooker, and he'll kill some kids at a fucking summer camp. This motherfucker don't care. So we cut to 10 years later, new crop people at the summer camp and shit. You know, typical Jason Voorhees type plot line and shit. Cropsey shows up, starts killing motherfuckers. But, you know, standard plot, whatever. But this got a great cast, man. It's really going to make it memorable for you. They got Jason Alexander, motherfucker from Seinfeld. She got a real tiny background part, but it got Holly Hunter. You can you look closely see her. Fisher Stevens, like a little 14-year-old boy running around, fucking pulling his pants out, mooning everybody and shit. He's in it. So you got a strong cast of performers, you know, interesting people, you know, some of them you want to get killed, some of them you don't. There's a lot of fucking going on, a lot of near rapes going on, some sleazy motherfuckers in the summer camp. So Crops shows up, starts killing everybody, and he's got garden shears. I don't want to ruin it, but there's there's a big slaughter moment in this that this movie's famous for where like he pops up out of a boat and fucking kills everybody and shit. Fucking awesome, man. You gotta see the movie just for this one scene. But other than that, it's fucking good, man. Basically what it comes down to, there's like the final girl, so to speak, isn't a girl. It's this little nerdy, like Woody Allen Jr. looking motherfucker playing by I think his name Brian Bagner, the the guy who played Rat in Fast Times Ridge My High. So the ending comes down to him getting chased through the woods by Cropsey. And like one of the camp counselors that was kind of like a big stud, the guy, turns out he was, 10 years ago, he was one of the young boys who accidentally burned Cropsey. So, you know, he, he comes and they have a big showdown then. I ain't going to ruin it, but it's cool. Great special effects from Tom Savini. I mean, not a whole lot can be said about this. It's just a fucking typical slasher movie, but it's well done. The villain has cool burned up face and shit. You like it, man. You have a good time and they show some tits. So what else are you asking for out of early 80s slasher, damn it? Skeletons gotta drink shit out of straws. So The Burning being one of my favorite slasher films of all time, just fucking, you know, just so much fun. Great score by Rick Wakeman, man, like fucking, I don't know, man, like a lot of people say they don't like the score, they prefer some like more traditional Jason Voorhees type shit, but I like this movie, you know, the good music fucking made it distinctive. So The Burning being like part of that big wave of early slashers, but kind of sticking out as being one of the better ones, I like it a lot, man. I want to give The Burning 8.5 out of 10 as a movie. Picture and sound, this coming to you, the Blu-ray from fucking Screen Factory. I gotta say, man, they did a good job. I don't know if the masters they got was so good or they cleaned up themselves, but this shit is clean. Unlike some of the early, you know, other Screen Factory releases like Terror Train that has speckles and shit, this shit looks clean. I mean, maybe there's a little pop here and there, but it, like I watched all the way through, I didn't really notice anything shitty going on. The outdoor scenery, the camp, it looks fucking good. I mean, it looks probably way bigger budget than it probably really was. You know, it's, it doesn't look cheap at all. And all that comes through with the high def visuals. 
the sound, the sound is good, but unfortunately, like, whatever, I don't know if they didn't have the time, didn't have the budget, but we get some stereo sound, I mean, it's good, but it ain't, you know, everything that she wanted to be, it ain't gonna be coming out of the surround sound speakers and shit. So picture and sound, you know, just having the basic stereo, whatever, gonna knock it down a little bit, but I really like the picture, it looks really film-like, really good, really clear, nice fucking colors. Picture and sound, I'm gonna give this motherfucker 7.5 out of 10. Look at me, put me in a fucking James Bond movie. All right, they're coming with the special features, man. They got lots of special features on here. Full-blown special edition and shit. Like, one special feature I know they ain't even listed on the fucking box. I don't know what happened with that. Maybe it was a last-minute edition. But they got the audio... I don't know. They got the audio commentary by director Tony Malayum and international journalist Alan Jones. I'm not sure. If the, I think the MGM DVD had this commentary. Maybe it was another one with the director. But that's on there. And they also don't say there's a commentary on there from I, I don't know which one I didn't recognize her voice but one of the main girls and one of the little side girls in the movie and then some dude I'm not even sure really who he was but they they actually give I think a better commentary than director because they remember a lot of little stories and shit I don't film this cheap ass movie 30 years ago so I found that commentary really good and then they didn't even listed on the fucking black they got blood and fire memories this is what it says on the back but they don't really say like like I said they I don't know why usually when they want to tell you every single special feature basically they got an interview with Tom Savini now talking about doing the effects they got an interview with the guy who played Cropsey he's an old man now shit but he really enjoyed putting on this rubber makeup and hacking some naked motherfuckers up so you know kudos to him coming back they also got the theatrical trailer and more so yeah like I said they don't list everything that's on there Special features a lot more than you think would show up on the fucking Bernie, you know, true special disc, man. Special features, I really don't know what else they could have, unless they, like, chase down the Seinfeld motherfucker, which you ain't never gonna happen. He ain't gonna talk about this cheap-ass shit. But other than that, there's not much more they could have done for special features. Special features, gotta give them a good fucking rating of 9 out of 10. Okay, so the Bernie, man, like I said, one of my all-time favorite fucking slasher movies. I liked it a lot, man. Be sure to pick it up. If you got the DVD, cool, but I still think you maybe you want to spring a little bit of money and get this blurry because it's fucking nice as hell. <laughs>